hope I've never moderated before, but uh, I guess I'm just going to ask some questions so I guess you guys can understand sort of what each of us do, really what a stylist is, you know, fashion director, fashion writer. Um, so um, I guess I'll just start. Uh, I'll start with Horatio. I guess if you want to just talk about maybe how you get how you got started and was it fashion that you love? Was it writing that you love? Sort of which came first? Yeah. You I had know. to think about this. I've been doing it since about 1912. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was a while back, but I started when I was about 17, I want to say, and even then I had a very voracious appetite for fashion magazines. I grew up in Australia and. I'm pre-internet age, so therefore to bridge the sort of tyranny of distance that we, we had, you know, we're on the other side of the world, I, um, I gobbled up magazines, every, every single magazine, whether it was a Croatian L or Greek Cosmopolitan <laughs> or, you know, Lithuanian Vogue, what, whatever, you know, I really gobbled it up and, um, and really made it my business to know as much as I could about both the current scene and that led to also reading a lot about Old, old school designers, you know, so going back to basics. And I think when I was about 17, I won a fiction competition for a teen magazine called Hero. And I wrote a masturbatory ode to Billy the Kid as a poem, which one? <laughs> and part of that involved, I got some really crappy CDs, like a sting. I, think, I don't even know if we had CDs in the <laughs> records, but um, I got some sting. Um, <laughs> some Bob Dylan and then um, but one of the prizes was getting to review bands and the occasional CD and then I won another competition but you know that sort of parlayed into another thing and then I worked at the Australian Women's Weekly which was actually a monthly but for obvious reasons they didn't want to call it the Women's Monthly <laughs> so <laughs> I worked there as a copy boy for about three to six months and my jobs involved um, distributing the food after it had been tested in the kitchen. Um, and anything, anything they gave me, I was you know, a very sort of eager participant. And then towards the end of college, I was doing nothing to do with publishing. I did political economy of women, because um, I was the only guy, basically, so I thought I'd get good marks. And then um, I was offered a job, a full-time job at the end of college by the magazine that I've been freelancing for for about three years. So I quit college and never went back. That was my break. And then, you know, I clawed my way to the top, sort of, you know, backstabbed everyone in here, I am. <laughs> Stepped on people going up. Um, and Rebecca, um, how did you get started? Or I actually um, moved to New York under the guise of being a performer, as, um, as Rebecca had stated earlier. And I actually found myself assisting um, very early, um, early 90s, late 80s. I found myself working with like David LaChapelle, who was my neighbor, who <laughs> had no clue. And um, he was actually helping me build my characters for my performing. And um, interesting enough, I mean, I started to, to design the costumes, do the props create the entire ambiance and this led me into actually assisting when I didn't really even realize that styling was a job. I had no idea. I had no background in fashion. I had no clue. I didn't know you could actually make money doing what we do. I didn't know. I didn't I was very very naive and it started out as a very natural um, um, occurrence. We just started to create these characters and from these characters I then could look at, at um, a, a model or another character that was working in the downtown scene. Um, I had actually moved to New York with RuPaul and, and um, all of these very Atlanta, I'm from the South originally, and um, you know I had all these really wonderful characters all around me who were living and breathing fashion, but I didn't really think of it as fashion, it was, it was just that's who they were. And so I sort of found myself into this mix and, and we started to create characters and we started to, to, to work together and build images. And so when I got my first job, my first rotten t television job, a pa which I ran around, you know, sh you know, schlepping garment bags in the garment district on the subway, which was completely hideous, but that is our job um, and still is my job <laughs> 20 years later. <laughs> I'm still doing it. This is now I have a car. Um, <laughs> but um, it, it really developed as a very natural way of being. It was just something I was interested in. I wasn't really that interested in fashion. I was, inter in, I was more interested in creating characters. 
my fashion um, bug, if you will, um, really came with Sex in the City. I, I really hadn't been that interested. I don't read fashion magazines. I really just, I look at people and people inspire me and I try to parlay that into what I do every day. And if, it, if it's a cosmetic ad or if it's a, a, a celebrity, it, it's always worked for me, I guess because of my theatrical background. Um, but I really, I'm sort of new to fashion. I don't really, I don't really consider myself in, in I just, uh, I don't really um, think of my job as a fashion. It's just really developing characters and, and, and creating as much madness as I possibly can. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure I wasn't the only one who was still schlepping garment bags 20 years Honey, later. We still all <laughs> schlepping a garment bag. <laughs> um, and uh, Dan? Well, you know, I've <clears throat> I'd always been interested in fashion, but I didn't, I didn't, I never studied fashion. I never, um, I mean, I grew up in Kansas City. So, you know, um, I, I remember the, the early days uh, in, the, in, the, in the early 80s, late 70s, um, trying to figure out how in the world all these beautiful clothes got into GQ and where they were sold in Kansas City, which was like, <laughs> you know. So we would, we would go to all the beautiful old department stores, which then there were many beautiful old department stores in Kansas City. But, you know, I, 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 uh, I've always been um, a journalist and I, um, you know, through high school I was always interested in journalism and writing and uh, then um, I uh, studied I had a journalism degree from the University of Missouri, Columbia, and so I never, Stan, I never. We just have to speak up a little okay. more. Okay. So. Well, I never All really, <laughs> I never really, I never really was sure how one melded a fashion career with a journalism career, because no one ever, no one ever told me. So, um, you know. Uh, I decided that I was going to work at Fairchild. I decided that I wanted to work for Women's Wear Daily or DNR. I was actually more interested in DNR at the time because DNR was a daily and it was uh, pretty much like Women's Wear Daily with all the same kind of, you know, scoops and, but from the men's industry. And uh, that's where I decided I wanted to work. Well, I didn't get there quite yet, but um, long story short, I ended up in New York. A friend of mine who was on Broadway said, oh, why don't you come and hang out with me and my girlfriend in New York and we'll hang out and have fun. Well, he went on tour. I didn't have anywhere to live. I didn't have a job. <laughs> I didn't have any money. So I had to get a job. And my first job, I, was a, um, I wrote a weekly column for a newspaper that was uh, called a chemical marketing reporter <laughs> and I was the drugs and fine chemicals editor so I had to write a weekly column about the drugs and chemical market now that was great because the thing that I learned is that you know if you are a writer and you're writing about markets you can write about anything you, it doesn't matter whether it's shoes whether it's buttons whether it's chemicals so it was an amazing experience um, writing on an IBM Selectric uh, with white out and you know and really learning you know how to how to churn out copy uh, in the meantime I had before I got this job I had walked in off the street at Fairchild when Fairchild was right over here and I walked in because I didn't know no one told me how you're supposed to go about getting a job so I just walked in and the oddly enough the director of human resources met with me and she looked at my resume and she said well, you know, the only job that's available is the assistant to Patrick McCarthy. <laughs> and that was, you know, before this chemical marketing job. And, you know, at that time there were no jobs in New York City. There were no apartments. There was nothing. And I said, I'll take it, I'll take it. She said, you'll hate it. <laughs> Long story short, she remembered, she remembered me when I saw an ad for uh, their home furnishings trade, which is, I think it's called HFN now, but it HF, was HFD at the time. And when I called her, she'd remembered me, and it was one of those instances where people say, oh, we'll put your resume away, we'll remember, but she remembered me. And so I got the job. It was, uh, an, I mean, I had the 10 years I was at, almost 10 years I was at Fairchild, was, I couldn't believe I was being paid to do what I was doing. I wasn't being paid very much, but it was a lot of fun. And then I worked in Children's. I was senior editor of Children's Business Magazine. That's where I started 
doing a little more styling, apparel styling, um, covering all the kids' categories. And then finally, after trying so hard, um, you know, I broke into DNR. And I, truly, that was a job that, I mean, my beat, I was features editor, and my beat was going to parties every single night <laughs> with a camera, taking pictures, and having daily copy. And so this was when it was a daily. And it was just the most amazing job ever. And then, you know, seven and a half years ago, uh, Maxim came after me. I didn't want to go. I was happy where I was. Uh, you know, uh, people said, why in the world would you go to this magazine? It's nothing. It's, ne it's, oh, it's you know, it's never going to be anything. It's never gonna I'm like, well, you know, I always feel like, you know, if there's some kind of opportunity or you can't have any regrets in life. So if you're young enough and you have time enough and you, I said, well, why not? And so I took the job, and it's, you know, that's, that's where I'm still there. <laughs> <laughs>